Um, what is, where is our stream? There we go. It looks like we're live. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Uh, Drew, Hi. can you send me a link to our own channel? I, like, can't find it. Where are the good games? Like, one word? Are you sure? You bet. Twitch is, like, I just, I'm sorry, chat. I can't read you yet. I promise soon. Okay. All right. There's a desktop. Did you send it to me? No, oh, yeah. There you go. Cole. You're, you're on it. Uh, I guess you're on it, too. We are all on it. We are on the line. There we go. Yeah, we're going to load up some fun stuff. Um, and yeah, I think we, we, uh, uh, this is not planned. My kid bedtime went a little bit later than it normally goes. Oh, there's no one here yet. Great. <laughs> oh, who knows? Who Could knows? Also so, oh, there are 26 here. people here. Ha. All right. Uh, Drew, Hi, everybody. send me a tweet, and I will retweet it, or I can retweet it right now. Sure. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll retweet something. I, I can do it. Come here. Yeah, so... Go, you, you, you talk, I'll type. <laughs> sure, so I just wanted to say, one, um, the first thing I wanted to say was that, uh, again, Colin and I still uh, bring uh, a, a kind of a strange schedule to where they like, get games because of Cole working, um, uh, we're commuting so much time to Oath during the day, and us still like getting together at nights and on the weekends. Um, to work on um, to work on packs. That's what kind of our schedule was this last year, and um, and getting ready for this Kickstarter. A bulk of it was um, still doing it part time while we were um, well while I was still at the Botanic Garden. So now that the Kickstarter has done way beyond our expectations, this means that um, like some sort of like um, we can really set up some structure and normalcy to. I think some of our like scheduling day to day, um, but yeah, Cole and I have just been floored by um, uh, by the response to this. Re uh, to the All right, there I am. Hey, there you are, brother. I'm putting myself somewhere. Where do I want to go? Here? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Maybe I want the camera. I kind of like the, the camera there. I don't know. Um, I, this is very new, right? I, I I'm kind of getting better at streaming, but this is all still. New you know, I like that it's uh, you're live. This is this is we promised the behind the scenes a little bit, Cole. Mm -hmm. This is very behind the scenes. I'm gonna make myself smaller because it makes me self conscious to be so large. <laughs> um, you're oh, looking yeah. at uh, you're looking at Kandinsky's circles. I can't remember the name of this painting, but I like it. And I turned it into a, a wallpaper by fill making it widescreen with a bunch of extra black. Oh, that's um, really funny. I didn't know that. Do, do, do. Okay, let me bring up the chat and then we can get going. Hey, yes, I got um this uh, this thing behind me uh, was given to me. We were Drew and I were in San Diego, and uh, the I can't remember his name. The guy who runs Blue Panther, who does a lot of their their orders, he had a canvas map. And weirdly, at that time, I didn't even have a copy of Traffic, uh, but he gave me the canvas map, and I thought, oh, this is great, but I didn't know what to do with it. So put it in a frame, put it on my wall. I um, have a couple, a few other strange things. Uh, this here, oh, this is a good, this is a good uh, it is a, find. It is, a, it is good next to that particular piece. Yeah, no, this is my, like, weird empire wall. So look at this, is a, this is a cutting that I found somewhere. I can't remember exactly where I found it. This is a map of Africa from, like, 1830. Where, um, you know, I, this is not, a, I, don't, I don't mean this is like a relic of imperialism, although obviously it is. What's interesting about this map is that they didn't know the correct course of the Nile. And so it's just super wrong. Uh, the Nile, like, comes down here and then it goes, goes that way. West? Yeah, it goes like, they, I think they thought it was connected to the Niger. Uh, anyway, oh, I thought that was wow. kind of funny. And so I have it for some reason. Um, <laughs> we'll put, I'll hang that up later. Uh, just random, random stuff I have hanging, hanging out. We're in my basement in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, we had a lovely day today. Uh, the neighbors played music. There was a saxophone and a guitar and a couple of vocalists, and they were just uh, serenading the neighborhood. It was great. I felt like I was in a, uh, a Snapchat from Italy. Wow, okay. Making the most of the, um, the Minnesotan quarantine. Right. Uh, okay, thinking about designing a Paxos game. Do you have any tips for fitting a lot of info on cards graphic design wise? Oh well, here I'll show you. We can we can we can get this thing going yes. properly. Let's so I fun. went um, I went deep into my email and looked for 
like the first time I had ever talked about a PAX game with Phil. And so I have like some little highlights. I'm not going to share too much, but because I have a lot of emails with Phil that, and it would be pretty boring, I think. Um, but I, I found this, this is from 2000, like the winter of 2013, 2014. Oh this is, uh, whoa, not you, not you discord. This is, uh, I'm sorry. There's going to be like spelling errors all over this because I did this very fast. Oh my this gosh, is like one of that. the very first, uh, here, let me get this over here. So I'm not, my video isn't, uh, cramped in my style. Uh, this is one of the very first packs from your cards. Um, wow. I made this in, uh, NAND deck and it was like a pure experiment and just like trying to automate my, my card design. I had no idea. How to do look at this. look at how similar the the eye icon is. Um, yeah, it's it. I've retraced that eye, which I'm sure I stole from somewhere originally. Oh uh, yeah, there's got to be flavor text on it already. Um, <laughs> and and at, so and so like as you can see right from the start, like I didn't know what I was doing. I was just how do you put a bunch of of information on cards? Well, you put it in Arial, and then you just slam it all over the card um <laughs> so then uh, actually though there is a weird precursor so i've mentioned this a few times but um before before premiere i um i did this redraw i guess i could look it up somewhere i'm gonna look it up on uh, my other screen i'll bring it over here um uh, okay so i did um this redraw of the spanish nope not it sorry this is me typing has got to be the least uh, entertaining lords, lords of the sierra madre is that yeah what, so is i did um this is the very first thing i did for phil i'm just i'm feeling very uh i don't know like reminiscent or what do you call it nostalgic right now so this is the very first thing that i ever did for phil this is a map a redraw of lords of the sierra madre um and it's fine <laughs> I really liked this game. I thought it was awesome. And there was nothing else like it. And so I did this redraw because I wanted to learn how to draw an old map. Um, mm. There's a number of, like, complete rookie mistakes here. I'll highlight a few. So, yeah. um, oh, I can't zoom in, maybe? Oh, there we go. You can see it a little better. So, um, like, this is a horrible type to use at small size. Like, what does that yeah. even say? I mean, I know it says New Mexico, but that's not it's not good. Oh, man. And, and then look, look at how hard, look how large this UI is. <sighs> just a ton. Just a, you know, who needs to be big Diaz. We need to give him a yeah. giant portrait. <laughs> but, um, you know, even in 2011 or whatever, my love of Victorian framework uh, was already, already evident. Right. Already, already. Um, hey, but you know, you still had that, the, uh, your water effects and your, your edge. I think you didn't have the, um, the infamous traffic, uh, edge trick yeah right? i hadn't i hadn't gotten to like infamous traffic level of edge work but it's already i'm already cooking a little bit oh uh drew you should post a link in the comments to the kickstarter oh, sure that's a good why idea why not right uh and all yeah i guess other people before i get either. too nostalgic before i get too nostalgic yeah this is very yeah 2011 so down here decision games slash sierra madre games designed phil eklund map cole Worley, 2011 um, this, okay, so there are a number of really embarrassing things going on here uh, what, that I just want to highlight. Um, one, probably the most embarrassing thing about this whole project was I did this in Photoshop, which is just the complete, like, the worst program you could ever do something in. But I cannot stress this enough. Uh, I had no, like, really no idea what I was doing here like complete none uh but it's i did it and phil liked it so much he asked for permission to sell it on zazzle and i think that my commission for these probably made me enough to get a t-shirt from him or something i think a few people probably bought it uh, i do have a copy of this map somewhere uh but i got really inspired uh working on that and it led me to um an even more insane project which is here uh, this is the redraw of Lords of the Renaissance, which asks the question of what if the already long Lords of the Sierra Madre were even longer? And then you get Lords of the Renaissance. There it is. Um, it's huge. I felt especially proud of this, which I thought looked much nicer than my other, my other title move. And then very proud of the cleverness, I thought, of the checkerboard uh, track here. Um, 
Uh -huh. And then th th this right here in the bottom is the uh, the auction block. Um, I did uh, so I did this map originally because the uh, the original Lords of the Sierra Madre, uh, yeah, Lords of the Renaissance map, is very small. So you don't really like here it is. Um, you don't really get this from looking at it, but this is very small. This is like. 11 by 17 or something, right? Yeah, it, it's a common... I, I think it might be a slightly different paper format than that, but it is, like, not big. Uh, and the fact that you have to put pieces on it is laughable uh, <laughs> in the first place. So my redraw was, like, much larger. And sure. then I was so, um, I don't know, empowered by doing this giant map of Europe that is just a study in brown that I actually did a full conversion for the whole kit, um, which here's, here's a little a little shot of that. So I'm getting uh, better. Right. Um, I all, yeah. I love this font, by the way. I wonder what I used. Uh, this looks great. Just, now, when was this, Cole? The, this, this is, is like 2012. So I don't know if you remember, Drew, when you came to visit me that summer, that summer we went to Barton Springs every day and watched a lot of The Simpsons, I yeah. had just finished this. I was like oh, working right. on it like <laughs> right when you came. Uh, because it was right at the end of the semester, and I was just, like, gunning through all the cards. I had the most insane... Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, I had the most insane workflow for this game. Um, oh, I wonder where that... I'm gonna, your, I'm Lords actually, of, your Lord's Redraw, or your... I'm going to try to find it right now. Because I think or, be like, working towards... Pac well, Man. okay, so the way it worked, <laughs> the way I did the, the Lords uh, of the Renaissance Redraw is... Again, I was working only in... Uh, one second. Lords of the... Whoops. Okay, I want to try to see if I can find this file. I know I have it. I just want to make sure I have. I can share it with you. Share it with uh, everybody. I want to share it with everybody. Uh, this is a good. This is a really. This is a very good piece of like Eklund. Um, I don't know, like weird lore. Uh, if I can find the dang file. Hmm. I don't know if I can find it easily, which is too bad. I, I do have it somewhere, but um. So the way my workflow worked at this time is I had a frame that I built in, um, I don't know, like Photoshop. It had several layers in it. Actually, I do know where that file is. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna show you guys. You it. should. Uh, well, I because, mean, I think this is this is your funny your funny time period where you're doing mo way more than you should be in Photoshop. Yeah, no, um, I, I was outgrowing Photoshop, but not ready to admit it. Uh, <laughs> okay. But I mean, it. But it did start with you uh, in Photoshop um, uh, doing uh, just posters, right? I yeah, mean, I, I did posters really for um, for school. I guess is the way to <laughs> describe that. A kind of school. You know where this file might be? It might be on a uh, flash drive. I have seen it recently though, so I know it's. I know it's around here somewhere. Uh. Um, anyway, here I'll, I'll just show you what it resulted in. So I have this document. It's 230 pages long. This is what I was working on when you came to visit me, Drew. And it was actually just one Photoshop file, and then I had different layers for all the different things that a card could be. Oh, and then yeah. I just I hid and 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 showed layers. And then would export it as a JPEG, or wow. maybe as a PNG because I wanted it to be lossless. But I remember uh, my horror the first time I played this game and realized that I picked a bad font that was very hard to read, and they printed a little dark, and I had no way to change it because I had made all of these cards <laughs> manually. I mean, like this document, I cannot stress this enough. This is two. This is every single card in oh in Lords of the Renaissance. Um, so a funny, a funny thing. Um, so I had, I had done this. This is like, you know, 2011, 2012. It would have been 2012 probably. Um, and uh, I had done this and I had shown it to Phil and he was super into it. He was like, yes, this is going to be great. And then uh, PAX Perfuriana came out that fall and I was an early adopter. Uh, Phil used to be, it was so small that he would commonly, um, uh, he would commonly ship his Essen games before Essen, just so that, like, it was easier, you know, he could, he could get, get them off, so I, like, I remember getting it in, like, August or September or something, it was, it was quite early, I can't remember the exact month, um, I'll, I'll just keep scrolling through this while I talk, talk through it, um, so he, I, I played a bunch of it, and then I was like, oh, I really, really want, um, PAX Renaissance to exist, and I knew nothing about game design. I hadn't even helped him on Greenland yet. Uh, and so what I did is I made this crazy version of PAX Renaissance, like from 2012. 
and I'll just show you. Here are the PAX cards. This is all the cards. You played this with me, Drew, I think. Oh, yeah, no, I, re I remember. The king is um, dead. Determine English ruler. Look at this. Yeah. This is me using some good clip art. Here's a hitman. Destabilized, oh, yeah. spelled wrong. Fleets. These are like really, there was like a whole like route building system. You could build these trade routes. They're these agents. There's a card back. Um, to play this online, uh, Drew and I used a software called Zunsu. Um, yes which it probably still exists. It's mostly used for war, playing online war games. It's super kludgy, but it, I mean, it's basically TTS in 2D, I think is probably the best way to describe it. But yeah, there you go. King's Consort, all that stuff. So I made this design that was very bad, uh, but I thought it was great. Uh, and then here's actually uh, the background that we used for our module. Um, so here's our little, here's our pack style market. There it is. I don't know why it's backwards. That's confusing. I had these that three tracks. I love tracks. Um, and then uh, I had a funny little map, mm -hmm. Mediterranean, and then a debt track. Debt always, a, you know, I didn't know what I was doing in game design yet, but debt's important. I think that's like Trajan or something. I don't know. That type. Um, anyway, the game was very bad. But I said it to Phil. He, he was super kind, and I don't think he played it, but he read the rules, and he said, um, oh, hey, like, my son and I are actually working on Pax Renaissance. You should come hang out. So I wrote, a, a, like, the way Phil's method was at that point, he literally took all of my Pax Renaissance rules and just copied them into his Pax Renaissance running rule document. And I think the only thing that survived of my design in the final uh, version of Pax Renaissance was a quote from Brodell that I really liked. That was, <laughs> no like, way. the header. And it, like, somehow... <laughs> It's about modernity in the wheels of commerce. It's from the wheels of commerce. I really like the sure. quote, but it like, <laughs> I think it was like it was like the header of like the living rules document. I don't think it's actually in the published game. Maybe it's a footnote, um, which is a claim. Goofy, claim the footnote. Thing. Yeah, I'll claim the That's footnote. Amazing. Um, but That's that delightful. engagement with Phil was the reason why he's like, hey, you should uh, come play test Greenland for me, and then Greenland turned into early. Pax Premier, which I'll show for people who are just getting to the stream, so we got more people. This is, uh, I had a friend pass away, and I had a lot of time on my hands, and my son was born, and then I just worked on Pax Premier, and this is one of the first Pax Premier cards that ever existed. I actually sent, I found it from, I think, 2013 or 2014, an email where I, I sent to Phil, sorry, I'm like jittering this box all around, uh, I sent to Phil, um, a few cards, and then let's see, there are some other things that were in that document. Uh, this. Always, always be selling. Also made in Photoshop. Wait, this, what? This, like, funny... Um, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Drew, you're getting the video at, like, three seconds delay because, you know... Um, there it is. Well, I haven't seen the old cover in a while. Yeah, this is, I'm like, look, it was in a square box, Phil. It's done. <laughs> um, and then the game really didn't work for a long time. It did not work. Uh... Uh, and then do, 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 this. So we played. So this is actually still me using Photoshop and Nandek. Um, this is probably from like the early 2014, like maybe March. And I um, actually I could I could look up. I'm going to do this live. I'll look at when this file was made. Yep, March 26th. Well, it's, it thinks it's today because this is when I downloaded it off of the cloud. Uh, so who knows? Who knows when this file was originally made? I think it was made in around March or February of uh, 2014. Um, this is actually still made with Nandek, um, which is insane. Uh, basically, how these cards are composed is I had several layers like this image. And they were all saved as full card images, but everything would be empty except for like this graphical element, the little, the badge, the banner. And then they just kind of set on top of each other. Uh, and it, uh, it was really tedious. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Um, but so uh, th this was, a f I can actually um, talk a, a bit about iteration A. So I had all of these, um, 
these early versions of Premiere that like did not work. And then I finally got the courage to invite some friends over and we played um, Premiere A, the very first Premiere, which is what this is. So um, here, I'll, I'll scroll through some cards so you can see what's going on. And we actually, I'll, I'll talk about a few um, a few design elements of this in a second. But we had, when we, okay, actually, no, I'll, here's what I'm going to do. I'll talk about the game first and then I can tell you what happened when I played it. So. Um, the way the game worked is there were lots of like blocking, like you had to ask people's permission to do like anything. And there were these funny car, like th this here, I'll zoom in a little so you can see. Um, this icon means like minus two cost if you're playing a, uh, an economic card. Uh, this one is you have to pay three bucks per star to kill a player's card. It's like a bribe, maybe? I can't remember exactly. Um... Let's see what are some other um, good it's, ones. But um, honestly, I, I haven't seen the old these old icons in a long time. It's funny to see the the frame with the with the action icon. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> kind of over the edge as a um, I mean that is even itself a um, a thing that's existed I think in your common vernacular of icon design. For, yeah, for a long time. Yeah, I don't really have any new tricks. Um, but it existed uh, in Premiere with the faint little edge, right? Yeah. So uh, okay, here this is actually this was the thing that I love the most about this design. So this wheel right here, this is a, um, oh, yeah. a, a connection. And the way it worked is like this Indian diplomat uh, could connect Kabul and Punjab. And so if ever you wanted to do anything that crossed this line, like if you wanted to use a Kabul card in Punjab or if you wanted an army to move or whatever, you needed this guy's permission. And several players could have the, the, the same connection. So you could have several people who are going to, you know, have permission or, you know, who are going to, you could have several ways of doing it. But it was like a very, like, negotiation, Republic of Rome, like, I want in, you want in, et cetera, et cetera, type, type situation. Um, oh, Drew, uh, can you post a link to the stream in the premier discord someone asked me yeah. to do that earlier and i totally yeah, forgot yeah. and i didn't want to i didn't want to leave no, let me, people uh, out who I'm might happy. like not I'm, have done I'm the first uh, uh second yeah. kickstarter yeah so that was a connection and this okay and then the cards had costs like uh perfuriana and when we got together to play this i played this with uh, some really good friends who would be playtesters for many projects and also some folks who I knew from graduate school but didn't game with very much. And we all got together, and I think I made dinner or something, and we all played these played uh, this game together, and it was a riot. I think it was like pretty early on in any of us any of our like ex explorations of design, and so we just went crazy. Like we had so much fun. It was like a uh, like a role playing session or something, um, and. Throughout the entire design, I had a I had a good friend who would tell me like, man, that first game of Premiere we played was the best one, because it was just it felt like anything could happen, and no matter how good the game got afterwards, it there's just something about that first play. I mean, it was it was a three hour game. It was so it was a blast. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to note about these cards is how much remained, how much survived is crazy. I didn't really realize this until I was looking at them today and finding these files, but like, okay, we have suits, they have stars, um, there, things have locations. And I had this, look at this great map that I made with some free clip art that I found, which I still use in, all, <laughs> in sneaky ways. Uh, here's my funny map. I spelt Herat with this weird uh, anarchic spelling. I have no idea why I was spelling it that way. Um, but, yeah, so you had this. And then look at this. You've got uh, loyalty prizes over here. There's a loyalty prize. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got patriots, right? Here's a, um, here's a Russian patriot. So it, it used to be that all the cards had affiliation, but then only some cards were patriots. And I'll show you how it worked a little bit in practice. Uh, this was a table layout from around the same period. Um, the local population, I don't even know what that means. This is like a Shutterstock image of like shimmering gold that I stole and just stuck wow. there for playtesting. Um, so this is good. Payment procedure. All costs are paid out locally in the following order of precedence. 
Each card receives equal to its power until the cost is met. Oh, that's right. So this is like, I have always been obsessed with closed economies, <laughs> um, right? Like every cost paid in the game was paid to someone. And it was based on like how close you were, etc. Um, this is a very funny way of doing the map. Just note that like yeah. the cobble to Transcaspia <laughs> connection is real mm-hmm. silly. Um it's interesting too like political entry this is very early on but like the notion of the free actions in suit was uh was pretty important uh but the most important thing that got left out of this design are these these are the empire tableaus and this was actually a very important part of the game originally uh basically you had uh the afghan empire the russian empire and the british empire and they all had their own tableaus and so you could play a card to your personal tableau but what really mattered is like playing them to the empire tableaus, uh, and then when you they were out on the empire tableaus, you had kind of like a halfway control over what the over what what the card was. Um, also, look at this these great this this uh, this is some good art. This is from I think a French book of illustrations of like people and personages of India. I'll, I'll show you some more of those in a little bit actually. Uh, but every player started with one connection, so they always you know so theoretically at the beginning of the game. You could move anywhere. You just had to talk to the players, and then players got extra connections as the game uh, continued. Yeah, the, con- the connections were such a cool element. Yeah, I was. Limited. I kind of want to do another game that is like just about connections. A very limited, like limited access uh, for some point. Of yeah, point. I like. I really. It's funny. I tried to even build that into Oath a little bit with the notion of connections, but I just can't. Kind of couldn't get it to work. Um, so why were the Empire tableaus cut? Uh, yeah, they kind of were just a little. I don't know. They just didn't work. Um, so th- there were actually there was a good reason why they were cut. Um, you got a map. You got these. You got these uh, these personal tableaus, and then you've got an empire tableau that has cards on it that the players own. And at this time, armies like were just cards. They weren't on the map, and it was just mm-hmm. too much. It was just too much information, and I remember one player after a playtesting session, uh, I think he was like a programmer who had worked in finance, and his comment was like, I think with a pivot chart, this game would be really fun and interesting. <laughs> but like with a pivot table. But just as as humans, it's uh, it's not very good. <laughs> and I, I think he was mostly right. Um, so it was just too much information to deal with. Although I will say that like, you know, Oath is essentially built entirely around this kind of shared infrastructure stuff. So I didn't leave this behind. I wanted to get back to this idea. I just didn't know how to do it. Um, yeah, I think I think Oath is a better format for it because, like, playing those to those communal locations in Oath is very much what you wanted to get right. Playing yeah. towards the um, the uh, the Commonwealth. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, and it was like, and what did I learn? Out, so far, what I've learned from Oath is like you can basically have about eight cards that everyone can be super familiar with. And then every player can only have like two or three. And that's as much as you get. Uh, it's just otherwise you get too much information. Uh, one little note. I'll just actually here. I wonder if I can show this better. But I made this wax seal. I was so proud of it myself. It took like all day to make a wax seal look like that. Uh, I'm a bad <laughs> illustrator. I also drew this like funny um, kind of like Aladdin uh, bad city wall. Um, oh. I am not an illustrator, folks. You know what? Not one uh, bit. The world is better for you spending your time. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, let me see if I can find. Yeah, look at these guys. You're leveraging your uh, your clip art. Uh, your, your yeah, my clip art. So I, I, I have been I have been uh, tracing uh, high resolution art pieces done in the 19th century for many years now. Um, yeah, these are great. There, there's a whole book of these, like people of personages of India. I can't remember the name of the author, but it is French. Um, and there's there's a bunch of them, and I like I found these, and they don't re- correspond to like any particular person, but I was like, this guy has to be in the game. He's just too much of like a character, and so I, I was. There's a lot of character even just behind. Well, and the life. fact they happen to have colors, like obviously this is the red player, and this is the yellow player, and that's the blue or purple sure. player. Sure, but also yeah. it was coming from a, a uh, like it wasn't coming from a. a uh, historical text. It was from a, coming from a text that was all um, uh, just clothing. About yeah, it was all clothing. It was all clothing. yeah, yeah. That's I think that's the great um, <laughs> that is the, the, the like the, one of the great secrets of people who work in historical games is like don't go to paintings if you want art. Go to 
travelogues and books about clothing. Because all the paintings are too dark and like too weirdly composed to be good card art, but if you like need a, a picture of an old person or a person from the 19th century, they could be young, uh, look at a clothing book. Um, you will find what you need. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at all these cards. There he is, Akbar, hanging out, local prince. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, they're so, and I, at this point, I had a lot to learn about this whole region. I was like, I had read Peter Hopkirk, I think at this point, but hadn't really dived into the more serious great game lit. And, uh, so some of these cards are a little generic because I did not know. Uh, cool. Let me look at the thread here. Is it true that all blood relatives of yours have one of your games on them at all times? Not all blood relatives, but pretty close. I think it's it's now probably by requirement for at least me. So yeah, um, <laughs> so I will show you then. Um, so I submitted to Phil the final premiere, uh, not the final premiere. I submitted to Phil a, a premiere for consideration after about a year of work, and I don't have the full kit. Sadly, I don't know where it is. It's it's got to be like hiding on. Dropbox somewhere? I don't know. I can't find the full kit, but I did find the cards. And I just, like, this is four months of work, so, like, my, my icons have gotten boxy and beveled. It looks like a like a Windows 95 strategy mm -hmm. game. Yeah, the buttons uh, that you press. The buttons just boop, boop. Uh, and so, yeah, we got that. I, I made the, the... I remember thinking, like, oh, if you make the star smaller, you know, you free up all the space. So that was, I mean, that earlier question about, like, how do you arrange all of the information? Um, it, so much of it has to do with, like, visual hierarchy. Like, what's important? Well, like, actually, the cost is important, but not really the dude's name. So there are these, like, funny things where, like, when you start arranging the information in a hierarchy, a bunch of things become super obvious. Uh, and this was also built with an Andec. I'm almost positive. I don't think I was data merging at this point. Mm, I might have been. I might have been data merging by now. By the, by eventual print ready, you were data merging for this. Yes, I was. Andec. It was a it was a weird data merge. Uh, if if you're interested, I keep looking over there because it's for OBSs. If you're interested in data merging, I think next week on Tuesday I'm gonna show people how the oath files work on the back oh, end. That's a that's a great stream. I hope so. It's gonna be a bunch of spreadsheets. <laughs> Everybody um, loves looking at spreadsheets. So what what program do I use for cards now? I use InDesign. I use a lot of InDesign, um, and I use InDesign, and I use um, a spreadsheet, and that's kind of it, and then I use Illustrator for a lot of individual elements, but yeah, I will go into super detail on that uh, on, I think, Tuesday, maybe, as early as Tuesday, uh, but yeah, InDesign is where, where that magic happens, um, so yeah, just, uh, but it's interesting seeing, like, you know, the loyalty prizes, like, how do you, how do you clean that up, right, um, and just, like, making the, re the regime change arrows, just like big old arrows. This is also, um, you can almost see when I stopped moving, uh, I, I started moving away from Photoshop. So this little interior shadow drop effect. Uh, Illustrator, I'm going to zoom in. We're going to get really detailed. Hey there, buddy. That's not actually a picture of Henry Rawlingson. That's a picture of Arthur Connolly. <laughs> um, sorry. I was still using a lot of placeholder art now, then. Uh, okay, so this arrow has a really nice inter internal shadow. Um, the internal shadows in Photoshop are much nicer than that effect can be rendered in Illustrator. So this is like, yep, I was still definitely using Photoshop. You can also tell, because you look at this boy right here, and it's all kind of like pixely and weird. Uh, this was drawn in Photoshop and like not wasn't a vector. I think I just like drew it. Uh, and so it got, like, you could not resize this at all. Uh, it oh was real fugly. Uh, yeah, but here it is. You, oh, oh, here's a, this is a good, there's a map. Look at me. So classy. In fact, I think, is this? No. Okay. Goofy, weird map. I can't believe I was spelling Herat like I was a, I don't know, a Britisher from, like, 1820. Um, my fun toffles. This is also a very, like, Photoshoppy phase in yeah, my graphic yeah, design definitely. career. Um... um used to be a mint action. You could strike coins. Uh, and then I remember I started doing research into that action, and it's like, well, they didn't actually strike that much currency at the time, so it's not not a very good not a very good action. Uh, I just want to see, oh yeah, here we go. Here are the Empire Tableaus. They're still existing as of Kit C. 
Uh, and then here were the connections and my fancy cards. They had gotten cleaned up just a bit. Uh, but yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's, I don't want to, I could, I could uh, get stuck in this stuff for a long time. Um, so, oh, you know what? I'm not even recording this locally. We're just recording it on Twitch. Is that fine, Drew? <laughs> um, I can, um, if you, you should press it now, uh, just so we have another backup. Why not? Why not? Backups galore. Um, what is this? Oh yeah, here's a fun little artifact. I thought about doing a different way of doing player cards. Let me rotate this. Um, so we've got uh, glyphs in Arabic, not Arabic, Persian, some description. I can't remember where I got these, but like I wanted something more abstract. I think I at this point I had just switched over to Illustrator. Okay. So I was my, my, it's, it's looking like it. Yeah, I I was cleaning up quite a bit in my graphic design. These aren't good for lots of reasons, but. Um, and then a really interesting thing happened in the development of um, of the game, which is uh, it was it was very bad. So Phil Phil played Kit C, and really really liked it, um, and decided to publish it, which was a dangerous thing for him to do. He gave me a pretty generous not a gen well, he gave me a pretty reasonable royalty. Let's say, put it that way, and um, and said hey to help promote it. And because you're building on my system, let's both share the credit on the cover, and you'll have the design credit, and I'll have the development credit, and we'll be off to the races. And so we worked on it, and worked on it, and worked on it, and then this funny thing happened. Um, the game stopped working, like, very clearly. And so he had already committed to publishing it. We had been talking about it publicly for a while, and the game was, like, flat, straight, broke. Uh, and so his son, Matt... Say, like I, I, I got in a call with Phil actually the very first time I'd ever talked to him on Skype. We've been like working together for two years at this point, and but he's like it's so serious. I had a really bad play test with my son. I need to talk to you. So we had a Skype call, and he said, "Hey, your game is impossible to think about or track," which is something I still struggle with today, y'all. Um, <laughs> is my connection like laggy? Is it pretty good, Drew? Um. I don't know how it is for other folks. Um, I think you're breaking up with me over our call just a wee bit. Oh yeah, but boy, I've got like folks I... in the chat can uh, can let us know. Oh yeah, I'm seeing a little bit of lag. Let me I'm gonna send my wife a message. Um, if you'll... Okay. Okay. Um, there we go. Well, we'll hope that it fixes itself. It's a little goofier. Oh, I got I got the green light again. Okay, good. Um, so anyway, Matt was like, "You got to fix it." And so I took the, the I worked for about a, a solid weekend, and I built this map. There it is. Ta da! The map. And this was the first time. This was like from April or not April, probably March of 2015, maybe. And uh, it was using this map, which I printed on a single piece of letter paper, letter-sized paper, you could put pieces on the different connections. And then the game, like, worked. It, like, it so quickly just burst into life, which was really fun. Um, yeah. Oh, you broke, yeah, I got it. Okay, so, um, so Phil basically said that the game was very hard to think about. Um we were just having like, oh, you know what's going on? I need to tell Dropbox to cool it. That's what's go. happening. Let me let me tell Dropbox to settle down here. <laughs> it started, it was doing like a massive batch upload. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's much better. Uh, so F Phil basically said the game was very hard to think about because too much. there are too many, uh, we call these, or at least I call them, uh, virtual currencies, which is a currency that you have to track, but you have no way of tracking it. So a classic example here, if you've played Vast, is um, Perception. So Knights in Vast have this, uh, or the Knight in Vast has a resource called Perception, which you have to spend to have encounters, but you kind of have no way to track it. So you just have to remember, like, okay, I've used two Perception, I still have one more, or I want to free up some more Perception. Um, and it's a little awkward, and actually one of the big... Uh, things that we tried to do with Vast, the Mysterious Manor, was rebuild the night without perception. So in this thing, you had to think like, okay, 
what are my spies? Where are they located? What are their values? Are they on Patriots? Do they have this behavior or that behavior? Um, Thanks. Um, um, sorry, I had to respond to my wife. Uh, okay, so anyway, uh, that, that fixed it, though. We, like, made it, we put everything on the board. Uh, I, I gave uh, Phil basically, like, a what if all the pieces have two different purposes, and then we kind of went from there. Um, and this was after the design was, uh, was like, submitted, and at this point, like, this change art, this change, um, manifested itself yeah and i had um it was it was kind of phil really let, lets me do my own thing which i really i mean it was amazing you put that much trust in me uh so early on but this was the first time that he like came in and said like hey i've been watching you work and there is a problem and you need to fix it or we can't publish this game so it was the first time that he came in like pretty hard and was like hey you gotta clean up your business um would you put exhausted root the chat asks would you put exhausted root craft into that category yes Oh, yes, I would. Um, funny note about Root. Uh, when So we didn't have any turnaround between the first and second printing of Root. Like, Root sold out instantly, and then we had to immediately resubmit the files. And if I would have had a little bit of time, I really wanted to go through every piece that was a crafting token and give it a crap like exhausted and unexhausted side that you would then, like, flip at the end of the turn or something. Um... Uh, but we just didn't have time to do it. And then by by the time we got around to the third printing, I was like, ah, I don't really want to, you know, branch this or something. But it, 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 that is uh, one of the uh, one of the things in Roots, that, that, that Root that does have a virtual currency. I really do try to avoid them mm. where possible. Um, okay. So, uh, you know what I could have captured, but I didn't for some reason, is um, early Pax Premier cards. But I've got some actually right here. This is why I brought my camera from work. I went into the zone today to go to work to get stuff to share with you guys. Now, are you, uh, you're talking um, uh, for the second edition. Uh, yeah. Those, uh, those prototype cards. I'm talking about the second edition. Yeah, and I do want to talk about John Company stuff too, but I know that there's so much to, there's just so much to share. Um, so, here we go. This is from an early playtesting. This is an early playtesting card. I guess I'll hold it like this. Let me see. Make sure I'm doing a good job. Ooh, there we go. I'm sorry about the focus. I guess I could show digital files for these. Um, but uh, I started working on this um, when, like, I was working on root. Root was kind of near being done. Woo. And there were a couple things that happened at the same time. One of them was I had this idea of the impact icon. Where, like, what if you made it... I just, I wanted to make Premiere a little simpler. And I've written a bunch about why I did the second edition, so I'm not going to rehash everything. But it, it kind of started as, like, a, hey, what if you did the same game with a better UI? And then that just led to more and more design changes. Um, but then, when I was doing it, I found all these images, like this one, actually. This is from a, a large uh, lithograph. Um, all of these images, which I thought were only ever in black and white there were hand-painted color versions. Uh, and so I tracked some down, and suddenly this game that had a lot of black and white art suddenly had color art. And so I was like, oh, well, I'm going to have fun with this art. Oh, I might as well change the card UI. And then one thing kind of led to another. And we started building out a lot of uh, what would become Pax Premier. Um, it was pretty incredible getting to see some of the um, that art that... I mean, there was there was no um, digital presence of the color version. Oh yeah, let me there. yeah let me actually show people. I guess it's even it's probably even on this computer. Uh, let me. Oh, hmm. and I think that felt like some of the um, the uncovering of something that like hadn't been seen before that we wanted to put out in print because um, it was you know um, these old files that uh are the these um you know these are kind of archived pieces that just hadn't gotten around to being digitized yet so this is i'm going to show people this is like the i got these um they're either 900 or 1200 dpi scans from the university of wyoming oh, yeah. uh, no, but i, I no still have these these files are massive they're each of them is like a gigabyte uh, but like the detail is incredible and here is uh dost muhammad and mcnaughton 
Um, interesting, this is a funny note. So McNaughton famously had um, uh, blue-tinted uh, spectacles, glasses, but not all of the hand-painted versions have those painted the same color. Uh, he's never renewed. But uh, there's actually a bunch of cards that, like like this is a different card. <laughs> um, I, because, you know, you, you only have so many of these illustrations, right? So you have to, you have to do what you can. Uh, with them, but they're yeah. just, they're incredible. I'm going to, I'll show another one. I've got, I've got lots of them. Yeah. Uh, the, it's, it is, um, it, it is a funny position that we were in where there is like just a wealth of art assets that didn't even make it into the game, uh, because they're like, some of them were too nonspecific or, um, or let's say like the framing wasn't quite right for having that bottom crop. Here's uh, a fun, I don't know why I part. saved this like this, but like I, I was happy. Whoa. One second. Sorry, excuse me. Um, there we go. <laughs> that's a, that's a, Isn't that funny? I like this is a, a progress one. I was like, ah, I like this guy. Whoop, and I just snatched that little corner. And then here's Cobble Markets is over here, and then I think the Fruit Seller is in another, is in another card. Um, they're just so good. I love these images so much. Um, there's a really good one that I like, this one. Now, um, both of these last uh, these last two are lith painted lithographs, correct? Uh, yeah, these are all painted uh, lit lithographs. Um, here's another one. It will take a second to get unblurry. Although I know that, oh boy, I, that's going to cause problems there. Look at that, though. It's incredible. I mean, like, I, I definitely got too high of a resolution. Like, it's stupid that I can get, like, the, the, the grain of the ink like that. That's dumb. Yeah. Um, but they are, they are, they are awesome. I love it. Yeah. You can, the detail is so good. These are all by, uh, James Atkinson. Here's McNaughton, by the way. There he is. Uh, glasses or no? Uh, nah, I think he might be wearing something like a monocle. <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to see. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. There's some images from images from PAX. Uh, oh yeah, in <laughs> Joe, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna get there. Uh, so when uh, one of the things I really wanted that I couldn't have in Premier One was a, a rectangular wooden block. Phil at that point uh, was a very, I mean, it was a very small operation because they hadn't run any Kickstarters yet, and he was you know kind of running out of his garage, and then he was in this move, and it was very busy. So we were always like very tight with budget. So if I wanted like a cube, I had to fight for it, which is so funny because at Leader. I can have as many cubes as I damn well please. I mean, like, they're just not that expensive. Um, but w when when Premier One came out, I told Phil, like, oh, I want rectangular blocks so bad. And uh, my copy of Diplomacy right now is unfortunately buried underneath a bunch of other uh, games, so I'm not going to go f fetch it. Um, but I had all these, um, these old Diplomacy blocks. The older v wooden versions of Diplomacy had these big, rectangular blocks and I was like I want these blocks for Premier because you can stand it up and be an army and you can tilt it down and it'll be a road and Phil was like that is too expensive <laughs> it's like that you can't do that and so when it looked like Premier 2 was going to happen it was like the first dang thing I wanted uh, out of that <laughs> game uh, and uh, I'd had like a really bad day at work not anything in particular just it was long and hard uh, and I came home and Katie had glued, this is my wife, she uh, had glued p dice together and oh, spray painted, so which is something I was planning on doing that weekend. She did it ahead of me and had spray painted them. So that we actually <laughs> used these. The dimensions for the Premier blocks yes. um, are, are modeled after two blank dice glued together. Actually, I think I have them. Let me see. I'm going to look. Do you still have the Oh, the yeah. Stuff? Oh, yeah, Drew. I got all kinds of stuff. Oh, it's oh, goodies. I, I do love the well, what happens to all of the weird prototype bits. They still exist somewhere. This is a, a yeah. stack of like very rare Eklund games that I'm just also note through. that the um uh like at this point already like dedicated to like the pastelli pinks and um, oh yeah yep yeah, totally definitely like people are like oh I hate that they're pink and I'm like no they have to be pink. We've yeah it's, um, it's been this way for months. <laughs> This is not anything interesting. Here's a this is a prototype box that I had. Whoop! I guess like my camera's over here, isn't it? Old prototype box. Um, okay. Uh, all right. So here, this is a we got a few rarities here. So this is a I'm gonna skip ahead in time. This is the Pax Premier box. 
that you know and love, except there are two different, well, there are a few differences. One is uh, there are no mountains on this boy. Instead, we have a kind of UV, uh, a UV texture of these mountains, oh, uh, yeah, which, if you kind of which I really mountains. liked, but it was like not quite right. And I don't know, maybe it was the right way to go. Who knows? History will, will, will tell us. Uh, so that was one difference of it. Uh, the back of the box was different. This was not the final back. And uh, perhaps most importantly, this box is quite thin. Um, because we thought we were going to be able to make the box even smaller than it actually is. Oh my gosh, that's right. Uh, and we worked so hard. We worked so hard to try to get it to be thin, and it just wasn't thin, um, which was a big bummer. Um, hey, let's see it's here. Still a pre- it's still a pretty modest box. Yeah. Oh, but l- look at this crazy tray that we had. This is a good... This is what we thought we were going to be able to do. Oh, my stuff's just flying out of my box. Uh, yeah, we thought this cool tray. Uh, we, we, uh, I looked at producing these like super fancy deluxe coins. They were very expensive. I didn't even t- ask Joe because I got a sense of how expensive they were going to be, and I was like, nope, it's not going to work. Oh, this is an Oath coin. I don't want to get that in there. We're not showing the Oath coins off yet. Sorry, stream. Um... Someone's going to freeze frame and send it to Patrick. I'm going to be real embarrassed. Uh, in <laughs> this box, though, yeah. Wait, what's in this box? No, this is like almost just a complete set. Of, I don't know where they are. How funny. Well, I I especially like this in comparison to um, really having the, the glued pa- spray painted blocks in comparison to. Yeah, uh, I, I had, I have the spray, context I have the spray painted blocks somewhere. I don't know where they are though. That's so funny. I thought I, I literally, I didn't even check these boxes because I was so sure that they were going to be inside these boxes, but I guess they're not. Uh, anyway, I'll put those back right now. Uh, so, uh, anyway, back to the, the spray-painted uh, blocks. So these blocks, these little blocks, they serve me so well. Um, we, I put them in a kit. Uh, Katie and I uh, made this map. So I went to the fabric stores. I wanted it to be like a dark mat, a dark color. Because I don't know why I want it. It, just, it, it seemed it felt right. I thought it was going to feel right. Um, and so we painted with gold paint on it. This is actually a piece of, like, denim. Uh, and then we used Owen's little pedestrian crossing sign to make the circles for what would become the score track. Um, and so we made that and then, uh, here it is. Here's the game with my, uh, with my blocks. I think, I think more than anything, like the form factor is like, um, like still, I think it's because that cloth, that cloth mat really set a, a very, um, uh, that set a lot of the, uh, the scale, the proportions. Um, well, and, and people were like, no, I don't want the cloth mat. And I'm like, they just, there was, th- this this project was, is the most out of, I try not to have like a vision. Because visions are dangerous. Nobody wants a vision, right? Like scary. You're, you're just going to screw something up if you've got a vision for something. Because you're, you're not going to be fl- as flexible as you need to be. But with Pamir, I like had a vision. I had a very like, I knew exactly how I wanted it to look. And so even though I didn't have, like, the ability to 3D print or any of that stuff, um, I wanted to, like, get the feeling right. Here's my wife signing her name. I think that's a Katie oh, nice. Wiley on there. Um, but, like, uh, one reason why we use dice for the blocks is because I wanted the weight to be true, to be, like, mm-hmm. kind of heavy and chunky. Uh, but, yeah, there it is. And we actually, we played, I, don't, I wish I knew where they were, but we, we played with these blocks for um, months. <laughs> like, um, we had, where is, this is funny, Drew. Can you figure out what table this is? <laughs> um, oh my gosh. It like what almost looks like this? our parents' table or maybe, the, but we're playing the bloody inn as well. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, this is, must be in a public venue cause this doesn't, that, that is not a familiar table. Oh, you know what, you know what this is? This is at the source. There. This is at at the source, a great a great uh, Minnesota game store that everyone should frequent. Um, what else? So then, uh, I taught myself how to use Blender badly, but I did. I did teach myself how to use Blender, and made the first render. This is the, my very first three D object that I made. Um, there it is, a very early render. Um, and then I 
I submitted here. I'll actually I'll show you all what I submitted to Joe. Uh, who is uh, Joe? Yes, this in fact this game is uh, so extra. <laughs> yeah, it is so extra. It's nonsense. Um, <laughs> yeah, someone in the comments was like, "Can you make the coins free?" And I'm like, "Man, you don't know how much we're just giving you. <laughs> this, like, my day job would never produce this game in a million years. It's so extra." Uh, okay, let me find. There's a. I have a fun little thing I can show you all. So, um, yeah, here we go. So this is actually what. Uh, at least this is how I do it. I don't know. Everyone does it differently, but I like making these fun little charts for how I want the pieces to look. So I'm like not a very good 3D modeler, but I did make this little pattern, and then I was like, it's seamless, so you should be able to wrap it around a tower, in theory. And usually I just give them like one dimension, because then they can size it appropriately. These are vectors, so they can just take them. Uh, and I was so worried, because if you look at like the bird, the detail is so fine on those wings. I was very worried, actually, they weren't going to turn out well. Oh my and gosh. like even, this even little like line right the... here, this gap actually is worse than the bird. Like this gap, this is literally like a millimeter, or maybe even a little less. But there and, you go. And, and resin is an imperfect material. And yep, the fact it's going to be like, rough and weird. And it, I mean, and I think the games period uh, helps uh, create some forgiving space that mm. these what? things are like, you know like um, like almost artifacts or something or or more than anything aged yeah right? oh totally and i am um, so like one a couple things so one working with resin you always have to have one uh side that is um flat because it's uh, as joe has told me many times it's like an ice cube tray they pour the resin in an ice cube tray which is not exactly how they do it but it's a good metaphor and so that bottom side is always going to be rough and i i don't know if i have them around here but i ha oh yeah i do actually some early samples. I'll show you photos of these two um, so you can see. Um, like the early samples, here we go, where's my camera so I can make sure I'm going to do this properly. So like the early samples, oh boy, this is, uh, we're like a little like crooked and so we had to make a note because the bottom is actually just like the top of an ice cube, right? So the bottoms are pretty imperfect which means they're going to sit in a way that's like crooked. Yeah, I don't know if you can really see, but it's pretty crooked. You're also going to get little imperfections like the thing in the corner. Again, I don't know if any of this is seeable, but this pattern is going to be different on every block. It's pretty organic. Um, yeah. And then the uh, last thing, uh, oh, here, this is another good production note. Woo, I'm knocking over my computer. So you'll note these these big numbers over here on the, the right. This is a, a Pantone number. To figure out the Pantone number, I had to purchase one of these dang books. This is actually the one we use at Leader Games because none of us have one, and so we just use mine. Um, and a Pantone book, they're stupid expensive. I think it's like 100 bucks or 200 bucks. And they have, it's all the colors of the rainbow. And you have to figure out exactly which color you want. And so you do a lot of like, do we want that yellow? Do we want that, that orange? Or whatever. Um, and so uh, one of the things that we'll do too is we'll, we'll select our colors. And then I like to experiment them in, in different, like, what does it look like low light? Or it does, does it look like with white light or yellow light or blue light? And you just kind of like test them in a bunch of different uh, settings. And sometimes you'll take some photos and you'll run them through color blindness filters and try to make sure that you've picked some really good colors. Um, I am not trained in color theory or anything like that. So I'm pretty bad at this. I'm a little colorblind, which doesn't make it easier. But Kyle Farron, the artist at, uh, at leader games is like an absolute master and so whenever he gives me a palette it's like perfect <laughs> it never has any problems nice. um so then uh so I, I sent these to joe or something that looked like these and then at uh at pax u or somewhere like it a pax of some description he gave me i'll, I'll put a photo here so we can i'm gonna you're, i'm coming at you in stereo now um, he gave me these, which I have oh, in my hand man. still. I'm going to keep them, keep having to hold them for as long as you know, <laughs> should live. Um, so these are, uh, test pieces that I don't, they're done of, they're like mostly silicone, I think. I'm not sure, or silicone resin. I don't know. There's some material. Uh, they're all, they feel like plastic. Um, you, you would guess that they're plastic. But the detail on them was incredible. So I have actually, I'll show you the tops. The tops are, is really where you can see it. 
Uh, here we go. This is a horrible photo, but I don't know. I had a, I had a really janky old Windows phone when uh, these came. But you can see that like yeah. they really nailed the. Uh, and that was the. Burn. And that was like the first time getting the proof of concept that. Oh wow, the like that detail will come off. Oh yeah, and, and I mean I have to like okay, so this is this is embarrassing, but because you guys are all backers, many of you will know. Uh, uh, let me just share this with you. Uh, quick reminder. I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, like, this is what we sold people. <laughs> the first Kickstarter. Sorry, don't get the $60. I'm sorry, it has to be more expensive now. Um, yeah. But, like, this image, like, this is this is crazy. Like, I didn't... Yeah, there I mean, was so much... There was so much faith behind, like, like those will be those will be resin blocks. Right, right. and, like, it, and it, it, it turned out proven. super... It too, but it was, like, in my mind, it made sense... And guess and, what? Yeah, even if they looked just like some painted dice, they will look and feel great. And yeah. that was what we were going for. And so I, I, t I gave these to Joe, and he was, uh, or Joe gave me these. I was so excited. I wish I had a full set of them. And then we had a correspondence where they figured out the proper um, silicone mix for the resin so we get this kind of stony chalky feeling and they're so awesome i love these blocks so much they're so fun to play with as much as i like what we're doing with john company these blocks are special because they're such like this is a board game piece we are playing board games love it yeah um cool do i have any other random premiere stuff to share i'll look for questions no question. Can I can I get one of those trays? Yeah. Well, you'd have to ask Joe. Um, yeah, I uh, I I love how it looked. I have um I guess in the closet over there I can I have like samples for the the cloth mats and stuff. Oh, let me think about where those are. Oh, they're upstairs. Oh man, I it's almost worth me running upstairs to get these mats. I don't think I'm going to do it though. It's too. Oh, the crazy. the old mats. No, I think the I think the I think the photos to show the context of the um, I think the jump between Katie's prototype and uh, and the actual map uh, is like yeah, you like you get it. We that. just I want you to know that like we tried a blue map, we tried a white map, we had all sorts of different colors and inversions yeah. and things. I have I have those samples upstairs in a box. Um, but the mat was actually a lot more practical than I think folks give it, given the fact that resin is so imperfect and sits unevenly. Yeah, you like want like you need if the block is going to be imperfect, the the whole maze on scene has to be imperfect, right? Like. Um, <laughs> Joe did show me like a tour de resin um, uh, that uh, that yeah that time at Origin. So uh, I do get, <laughs> that, I do get my head wrapped around it pretty well. No, and I, I like I am so it was funny because then so I, we had such a good experience working with resin as material and working with Joe. <laughs> and when we were um, making the pitch for Root Underworld, I came to the team and was like, "Hey guys, we have to do resin clearing markers." And everybody was like, no, they're going to break. They're going to be stupid. Don't do it. And I'm like, no, they're going to be amazing. Y'all don't even know. And I'm so happy we did because if you have Underworld, you know how sweet those resin clearing markers are. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm wearing pants. I'm not wearing a shirt, though. Uh Let's see. Okay, cool. Um, I think we should talk about John Company now. Cool. That sounds like a blast. Did we get through all of your? Um... I'm trying. I got through. This is pretty pretty much through my show and tell. I have like, I could go for a long time. One thing that I did, so I don't have very much. Uh, I I don't really keep a paper record. Like I have got like this random pack of premier cards from a playtest. Um. I think maybe I should get better at keeping paper records. It's just hard because I throw, I've throw i thrown away probably like a hundred oath kits at this point, or, or recycled a hundred oath kits at this point. Um, and I, when I moved out of Texas, I had... Um, so Ordis Regni has these like really beautiful boxes. And I had a, a bunch of Ordis Regni, but I had collapsed it all into one box. So the other boxes were just completely filled with Premier prototype cards. And I threw, I recycled them all when I left Texas. I was like, I'm done with this. This stage of my life is over. I'm going somewhere new. Who knows what I'm going to do? But I don't need to carry around paper 
for a game that doesn't even exist anymore. And so I, I got rid of all, all of the, uh, the you old. You just need to hold on to a little bit of some of the landmark builds. Uh, yeah, just a, just I want just a few pieces. Like, I'm never... This bag right here, this bag stays. This bag nice. stays. Good. My bag of samples. Um, uh, okay, yeah. let's talk about John Company. How about we do, a, uh, we do a little bit of a pivot and talk about, like, what's next and what we've been what we will be spending our time on this um like across the spring and summer uh, um yeah so let's um john company so are there going to be blocks somebody asked are there going to be blocks in john company can you find a way to give us blocks in john company the answer <laughs> is like sort of like i like resin to me is such a great material for for games that i want it in everything and I have, like, we have plans for, like, really cool resin boats for John Company. And resin, like, goods markers. So, yes, there's going to be cool resin pieces. They'll be a little stylized. They won't be blocks, but they will be, like, boats. Um, for the player pieces, what we want to do is have... Um, they're going to be, like, circles or ovals um, that will have cameos. On there, yeah, not, like, like, yeah, like a cameo silhouette. style silhouette, mm -hmm. um, like I don't of, a, of a portrait, right? Yeah, let me. I'll just yeah. You, know, you can pull up a sample picture. I, I'm just gonna. I'll, I'll show folks. Uh, we're actually kind of like looking for the right artist right now to do all these. Here yeah. are some. Here are some cameos. So I want the the family markers are gonna be cameos. They'll be fakes, not real. Um. And you can get, I'm not going to randomly scroll you guys through Google image searches. That's crazy. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, so anyway, uh, but yeah, we want to do cameos. And I, um, one of the things that I really like about it is um, we, I think, are going to have the ability, depending on how well the campaign does, to do like 20 different designs or maybe even more Um because it, it just doesn't cost that much on the on the backside. There, there are, well, it does, but there are setup fees. And then once you pay the setup fee, we're good. So, like, we, we might do a bunch of different designs, which would be really cool. So everybody can have, like, the guy with the funny hat or whatever. Um, so should we show people on TTS? Is that the way to do this, Drew? Um, that would be – that seems like the most interactive way for us to just, like, show off some of the bits – Without yeah, diving in too much, and then I can also uh, be live uh, with you. Yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's get live here. I'll open up TTS. Uh, nice. How do I do? Yeah, that? that seems like a fine thing to do. So, um, give me yeah. a second. I'm gonna load up TTS. Uh, somebody asks. Um, oh, so you just stopped on the stream? You should, if you like Premiere. I there's there's been a bunch of things. So go to the beginning. Treat yourself yeah. to all the weird tidbits. Yeah. Apologies in yeah. advance for the. Premier, uh, the tabletop simulator theme music that is probably about to start blasting. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Wait, I think I had to turn um, it off. Um, uh oh, error. Um, nickname already in use. Yeah, and, the, and again, we're gonna we'll make uh, we'll make this video and Cole's, Cole's little tour of uh, of some of the um, uh, P premier antiques um, uh, available after after the stream as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me. So we'll be sure that, uh, Here's a John Company. I'll, I'll, I will move this over in just a second, y'all. Just give me a moment. Uh, somebody asked if... Um, here, one second. I'll be right back. I'm still on the microphone, though. Um, let me come back here. Okay. So, my hope is that... So, this is the, the final box size that we decided for Premiere, as you all know. Here it is. Got nice that, and then <laughs> bloop. Uh, someone just hopped on just to, in the middle to see the uh, that uh, premiere was once on denim. <laughs> yeah, it was once on. It's true. It's true. Um, so so so. Uh, anyway, uh, I love this box size. It is close enough to the old Avalon Hill bookcase game that uh, it's just like to me it is the right combination of like nostalgia, like functional nostalgia or something. So I would like it if all of our games were this size and potentially like this like physical weight, um, which is interesting because with, it's a little bit against type because when we were working on Premiere, uh, Drew, the, the game is up, you can join it whenever. Oh, okay, uh, thanks. When we were working on Premiere, it was really important that, um, it was really important that we find like a box size that was 
true to Premier. Uh, and now I'm going to be like, well, we got to make John Company fit in that same box size, um, which is a little silly. But I, I, my hope is that someday, like, y'all who like these games, you get three of these boxes, they're all going to be the same size, and they'll be like, boom. Pax Premier in the purple box, John Company in the dark red box, Infamous Traffic in the gold box. And like they can just sit right there, and all of the three Empire games will be like nicely set aside. Um, so, uh, with Infamous Traffic, are, is there any word on Infamous Traffic? Uh, I don't know, kind of. There's a map behind me. I'll show you. Ooh, maybe I won't show you. I have a stack of infamous traffic copies in the corner there that I'm going to use for testing uh, when Drew and I get to... Um, <laughs> thanks, Drew, you're cleaning up yeah, my mess. No, 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 you stuff. can keep those out. Well, well okay. I don't know. Put them over here. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys the TTS here in a little bit. Whoa, there's going to be... So, there's so much fun, weird shit happening in this. Sorry. PG. Keep it PG. Um... So, uh, Infamous Traffic, we're definitely 100% going to do. I have some experiments that I want to do on that game. Because, look, I, I really like Infamous Traffic, but that game was designed very quickly and under a very weird, in a very weird period of my life. Um, it was mostly designed by myself and my youngest brother, Blake, and a couple of his friends, and then Drew and Chaz in Chicago. And we just played a bunch of it. And I think... It's a good game. I'm happy with what it does. I think there's some weird problems, and I'm very excited to work on its development. Um, okay, so uh, reconstruction. I kind of want to make them all that size. I want I want this to just be like our the way our games look, and uh, I, I I I would feel very happy spending if I could spend the next five or ten years of my creative life building games that look that way and fit into that shelf space, I will be quite honored to do so. All right, yeah. let's talk about John Company. Um, well, why not? We'll just show you everything. Um, yeah. and, and then and then I'll kind of talk through what is happening here. Um, so this is John Company, y'all. This second edition of John Company. Yeah, this is the, um, this is the, <laughs> in, it, the rapidly in development... Uh, what if we cracked this thing open and played around with things um, stage? Well, and we had a funny thing. So we were originally going to couple uh, John Company with the Premier Kickstarter. Like, that that was our plan. And we got very close to doing it. Um, but Drew, Drew came up for a weekend and said, like, okay, what can we... Like, I'm not sure if we're going to have time to do it. Should we experiment? And so for the weekend, we indulged ourselves. And we're like, let's get really into John Company. And this revamping of the board and stuff was basically the product of like 20 hours of work over the course of three nights on a weekend. Um, and what we found was, oh my gosh, are we excited to work on this game? I forgot how much I loved it. Uh, we were having a great time with it. And then we we're like, this is going to take some work. Uh, let's slow down and do it right. Um, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. I want to just like talk through the board, I guess. Yeah, I think that like going through uh, like just some of the major changes and talking through the why and like, yeah, so, uh, I so think could, could just give some nice background information. We don't even have to do the full so like yeah. I mean, I, I I'll tell you I'll tell you what I know, but it isn't it isn't everything. So this is this is John Company Second Edition, as you can see. Ooh, there it is, John Company Second Edition. Um, and this is my very bad. Uh, homespun TTS mod. Look at this like goofy frame it put around it. I don't know. Um, the intent here, by the way, is the size of this board is like three pieces of paper, a little bit bigger, um, which means it's like a single trifold that you put on the table. And a lot of the UI information that made the original board so busy, and here I'll find a copy of that so we can bring it up here. Uh, all the stuff that made the original board so busy, it's still there, kind of. So here's the original board. Boop, there you go. Which is a board I like. It has a lot going on. It's a board I like. But um, it was also like, okay, actually, I'm going to say, I'll say a word about John, the first John Company. So this game came out in the fall of 2017. I, when I was finishing it, I was finishing a draft of my dissertation and moving my house and my son was like recovering from surgeries, Auden was. 
And it was a very stressful and exhausting time, and I cannot believe this game got done. Uh, and I was happy with how much had gotten done, but I also um, wish I could have spent more time on it. But I, because it was like, it was like I spent a decade like stewing on this game, and then it just a lot of stuff happened right at the very end that had me kind of like rush a little bit of the end. And I don't want to, not throwing anybody under the bus. Like, I'm really happy with this game. Travis Hill did excellent editorial work. I'm happy with the rule book. Chaz was a fabulous developer. Um, but it might have been able to use a little bit of time cooking. So, so here's a board and all this information. And here's the new board. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> one thing I like about the new board is that it has a map of India on it. <laughs> it contains right. a map of India, so that's an improvement. Um, okay, so what I'll do then is I'll just talk a little bit about the UI strategy that we're using for this game. So one is don't put so much dang text on everything, especially in the center of an area of play, because... Uh, when someone can read something up close, if they have a hand of cards, they can look at it like very detailed, you know, in a very detailed way. Um, but when it comes to like something out on the board, it's not really even that good of a play aid because you got to like reach over and kind of like look at it. And with Oath, um, Oath is getting around some of these problems by having large text and getting around other problems by having cards like reoccur and having a lot of like general interaction with all the pieces. Um, but with this, like the rule of thumb was, hey, get that text off the board. So you'll see that on the board, what are the things that matter? Well, in Office, the thing that matters is like, what is its order? And how much money is on it, right? That's what matters. And then if there are attached, um, like, adjacent positions. So like, for instance, down here, we've got some writers. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, and then here are the officers, which are below the Office of Military Affairs. And the captains are down here. I don't know what these pieces are. They're like Mentos or something. Um, somewhere from the, uh, the the workshop of TTS. Sure. Um, so what you'll do then, I mean, actually, the rules are quite similar to what they were originally. You know, you take your family action. and then Oh, you, yeah. A, a then lot you do hiring. A, a lot is UI and thinking, what if there wasn't so? Right. Like, what if the physical production restrictions weren't set in place? Yep. And so it's like family action, sure. Hiring, sure. And then chairman, ship purchasing, goods purchasing, military affairs, etc. But you might ask yourself, hey, hiring, where do I do, like, how do I, where's my ribbon? How do I know who to hire? Well, what we did is all of the offices have these office cards. Here we go. Um, and on the back of the office cards are the vacancies, right? Goods purchasing, you know, vacancy number eight, position filled by the director of trade. Writers are considered. So what you do then as, as positions are vacated is you arrange them in a splay right here by vacant offices and you start at the left and you say, oh, all right, well, the position is filled by the chairman. Actually, this is an error. It should say position is filled by the court of directors. And then here's the director of trade. It's vacancy number two. Position is filled by the chairman. President of Bengal filled by the chairman. Ships purchasing filled by the director of trade. And so you actually, it's, it's all the same. Like you don't, we didn't change anything. We just made it a lot easier. Um, ooh, I will have to listen to that conversation about zones of play. That sounds like right up my wheelhouse. Um, okay, so uh, anyway, that's hiring. And then let's say you are ships purchasing and you have this card. So that means if you have ships purchasing, you're going to have this card like in your little row, like your little personal tableau. And you'll see that you just go from top to bottom. What do I do? I purchase ships. And so you have to spend as much money as possible on the cheapest ships. And then you send those ships to the Director of Trade's um, office card. So here's the Director of Trade. Oop. So let's say you buy some ships. We are using Domino's because I'm not a 3D modeler. I guess I could make I could probably make a ship. <laughs> yeah, we were using Domino's. I could totally that. make a ship. I, I'm just not going to. Right. Right now. So we're just using Domino's. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, the director of trade will have these uh, these things on on his card, and so the first thing he does is allocation. He has to assign these to a presidency. Now, one of the things that I absolutely hated about the the first edition of John Company was how there was no room <laughs> to put these ships anywhere. The board was too small. So what we're doing now is the presidencies of these gigantic boxes, 
And so, you know, I'm going to assign them to the Bengal presidency, and you just put them on the box. Anywhere is fine. You know, just kind of in that area. You give people more room to play. Um, because if you give people room to play, they'll, they'll, they'll mostly do it do it right. Um, so then, yeah, you, you just you go through and you resolve these these offices. And actually, we have a funny, like, king counter that we'll use. I don't know what type of piece we should use for this, Drew. Mm, yeah. It's an interesting question. Okay, so, um, but you resolve all the offices in their order, pretty much just like they used to be resolved. Now, there's a couple of funny little things here. So one of them is, um, oh yeah, a stamp. That's actually, that's, that's cute. Um, or like a desk. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so one thing is when you're sailing, instead of uh, just putting a little black disc when you fill the order, and uh, instead you're going to put the, these little ship pieces, like, okay, I want to do the indigo order, and you put them right on the card. Now, you might look at this card and be like, oh, that's a region card, eh? Well, it doesn't have very much information on it. And you're very right. Um, and it's because, oh, yes, see, Joe, Joe, Joe knows how to upsell. Uh, but yes, also definitely like a, a sweet stamp would be great. <laughs> Travis, don't worry, I'm going to get to the elephant. The elephant's coming. Uh, so here is, I haven't even asked, uh, I guess I have asked Travis if he's going to edit it. I assumed he would. I hope so. Um... So, uh, but here's Bengal, but there's not much, very much information on it. So what we did, what we're experimenting with, this is a wild thing, is uh, a new event system, which I know I swore I wasn't going to change, but I'm changing. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, this is the, uh, the, the, there's a funny thing happening here that I just, um, I'm going to flip all these over to their whatever side. Um, so... This is like seriously uh, some like galaxy brain weirdo thought that may be completely wrong, but I'm going to what we've been experimenting with, and so far it's actually worked super good. Is what if you have redundant pieces? So like here's Bengal, and you'll see like this is prosperous Bengal, and this is depressed Bengal, and then like depressed Bengal, prosperous Bengal. Okay, so the Bengal placard is only uh, showing its trade status. So it could belong to different presidencies, it could be depressed or prosperous, and it could also be open, or no, uh, closed or open for trade. Okay, cool. So that's that. So here is a prosperous Bengal. Uh, prosperous Bengal in the Bengal presidency, uh, which is how the game begins, depending on which scenario you play. Uh, and then this map, so like this placard is only doing uh, trade-related things. Then over here, this map is the political map of India. And I look, I know these are not the actual sizes of the regions, but I had to do something. Um, this is, I want everyone to, to take note, I drew this almost freehand, this map of India. <laughs> yeah, it was... It was uh, I did it live. You, you um, gave it that uh, infamous traffic edge. So. Yeah, gave it the infamous traffic edge. I am learning. Um... So, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so we, we have uh, Bengal over here. Now, uh, what this means is this is Bengal's political chip. And if it's in its own region, it means it's sovereign. And if Maratha uh, conquers it, it goes in Maratha's region. So if Maratha starts conquering all of these pieces, then, oh my goodness, look at that. You can see it, right? It like, you can see them conquering all of India. And that way, when you look at the map, you can be like, oh, Bengal, here's its trade status. Its political status is it is currently conquered. Uh, the thought behind this is that um, it, I was being too greedy trying to bundle up too many different things in one thing. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, but that's, you know, that, 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 that's some of where that, that thought is coming from. There are too many things bound up in the cards of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so here are the, the Bengal things. And then uh, these, these tokens, by the way, that number is their defensive value. And then the bottom right uh, circle number is their uh, coin, is, is how much uh, plunder you might, you might get mm -hmm. um, uh, if you, you know, go conquer them. So you know, if, if, they, if the region comes under company control, you can put them in this box. It allows us to put the state of India like right on near this side, which is good. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
Over here, we have the elephant. I don't have a, an elephant in TTS. I'm sorry. I'll get one. Um, and you have the elephant track going in its direction. This is a funny picture, uh, actually, of Hastings um, on an elephant that I found somewhere. The woodcut, it looks like. Uh, but, you know, you, you can see, okay, here they go traveling, right, all these regions. And in fact, and in fact, this number up here, like number five Bengal, you don't even really need. What I would like to do, and I already have them actually, is give each region just an icon and not a number. And then you can just have the, because the number doesn't really matter. It's just, it needs to be an icon. They need to happen in sequence. And a circle will, will have that same effect. Um, okay, so then, this is where it's going to get radical, y'all. I'm going to take a drink. Oh, yeah, totally. No, I think, Joe, we could totally do some weird notched edges and kind of show them in a little line. I like the map, though, because you can, like, you can move them around and do some fun stuff with them. Even, honestly, even changing them to circles would, would do a lot of good work. Um, and uh, a lot of effort is being spent. To, I mean, like, this board, I cannot emphasize this enough. This is a small board. This is three sheets of paper. Um, and so if we need to make the map of India larger, like, we can do that. But I like having the small board because... Um, you can have more room for tableaus and like money piles and people shouting at each other. I love small boards. In fact, one of my favorite things about Oath, uh, which you don't really get in the TTS, is how like the game actually doesn't take up very much table space, especially for games of that weight. And so it, it doesn't like sprawl the way like Twilight Imperium like sprawls. And I love that about the game. Um, okay, so here is the most radical thing that Drew and I are doing. I'm going to show you how the event system works. So here we go. Uh, let's say I just flip this card. I've got a three there. I'm going to shuffle this deck, so I promise I'm not stacking anything. So we're going to do three events in India. So we draw a card. Flip. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, slow down. So first, like the old system, the elephant is going to move. So elephant begins here in Punjab. It's going to move to Maratha. So this event is going to happen in Maratha. We flip the event card. All the event cards look like this. They have um, like a... Uh, a if chaos if order if balanced resolve tilt event so uh, right now we'll have India start in balance and we're doing a Maratha event and so the tilt event in Maratha is you can find it on this little corner right here bloop, bloop. so Maratha's tilt event is an attack three revolt so the way attacking works now is you look at this little arrow and they attack neighbors following the arrow clockwise so Maratha Mar is first going to attack Bombay, and then it will attack Punjab, and then it will attack ben Bengal, and then after those are conquered, you go to the next ring out. I'm explaining this kind of poorly, but you'll get the idea. It was still in development. Um, so, uh, do, do, do. but it's funny how simple that uh, I mean, simple-ish. But the it's like um, who's Maratha going to attack? Player? Bombay. And so the way it works, tilt event. It's an attack of three. Bombay is a strength of one. So guess yeah. what happens? Yeah. Bombay slides down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the attacks have the same redirects. So like a successful attack will go to the lowest numbered um, sovereign region, which is the Punjab. So now we do event two. Is Punjab, and Punjab starts the game depressed. So if depressed, it attacks strength three, otherwise it's going to revolt. So it would attack going here. So it go, you always draw from line to line. So Punjab attacks Bengal, and then we'd have to re resolve that, right? And then after that attack, we'd go to the second event, which is another Maratha, and you flip this. Uh, I uh, can't... That, at that attack pushed it... Um... To uh, it's an alpha. It doesn't. It doesn't push the balance. Hmm. Uh, but and then it, we're still in the tilt event. It's Bengal or not Bengal. It's Maratha. So Maratha attacks again, and we're here. So they're going to try to attack the Punjab, and they're going to fail because the defense of Punjab is four. Um, this is like the most extreme example because we have all these attacks. But then you're like, hey, these are the three events that we did, and now the elephant is sitting on Maratha. So here I'm going to do another turn. Uh, and then we have it so you, you shuffle the deck, right? So the very first thing that happens, we're now in Hyderabad. Hyderabad starts, let's say it's prosperous, so it's going to re resolve a revolt if it's, a, you know, if it's under the yoke of someone. Otherwise, it becomes depressed. Boo. And then when you see there's like a little uh, arrow that says, hey, you can flip it. Yeah, sorry, not yeah, flip so it. You like move it to chaos. It pushes it towards chaos. 
And then let's do the second event's going to be in Mysore. It's in Chaos, so Mysore will revolt. Otherwise, Mysore will attempt to attack. In this case, it's attacking Bombay at a strength of 3. Bombay is part of this empire, so it has a strength of 5 versus the 3 here. So the attack's not successful. The last event will happen in Bengal. We flip the card. If Chaos, flip the region to Depressed. Ooh. Cancel all orders in the region. Uh, and then that's the, uh, you know, that's that event. Um, so what we tried to do here is put all of the relevant, like all of this stuff was like one icon. And what we try to do is make it so that a player with a pretty good knowledge of like the three or four core rules of the event system didn't need to look at the rules every time an event happened. And you could just flip these event cards and run it this way. Now, a savvy person would say, hey, this isn't going to produce the exact same event system pre as previous. And you're right. Uh, and we are trying to get it as close as we possibly can. Um, the, it is going to be slightly more chaotic than the old event system. I'll just show people. Actually, here, I can just search this deck just so you can see. Um, there we go the different events. Um, it's slightly more chaotic than the old event system, but I think it um, is a lot easier to run. It's much faster. And there's a there's an interesting thing that I've noticed in play, which is it it allows, like it does this funny thing where all of the events in the original John Company were linked to specific things that I had in mind or to like constellations of things. But if you couldn't, like, have a piece of art, then it, it felt very abstract. So people, even people who knew the game very well, would run the event system very quickly. And then uh, it, it, it felt, like, chaotic, and they couldn't really control it. And what we're hoping is, with this map of India, and with these event cards with images, historic images on them, it's going to ground a lot of the event system. And I think it it's going to work really well. So we're yeah. still experimenting with that, though. Mm hmm and I think that's an like that's like such a critical f uh, like frame that this development is going under that so much of this is exploratory, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of these systems are like have usability in at the core of it, mm -hmm. um, but if it's not producing the same kinds of outcomes, um, like we still want it to be as sharp as first edition John and Company. Um, Oh yeah, no, like in terms of the complexity of this game, I think it's going to get a lot easier to teach. I think it's going to get easier to play. I think the game is going to get harder and weirder. Like I just, there's this question of like, how much homework do you have to do to play the game? And how long before I can start like really wheeling and dealing? I'm trying to shorten that distance. Like that's really the, the hope of the design. Uh, I've got like fully too many tabs up and I don't know where chat went. There you are, chat. Okay, cool. Uh, if y'all want to see... Oh, what happened? Oh, I see. We're just a little behind. Um, if you all want to see more events, we can run more and show you how they work. But it actually is pretty much the old event design. Like, it's just not that different. It's yeah, just, there's, it, there's not wild card new events that the first one didn't... The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah there's like old. nothing... Yeah, there, there's like nothing special. Not nothing special, but there's just n nothing super new here. Um, so, uh, Darth Tanian asked me about setup times. Oh yeah, John Company's setup time will be coming down uh, a fair bit, not a huge amount, but the original game's setup time wasn't super high anyway. Um, and, uh, a lot of that's like product design, but yeah, I'm super obsessed with setup times. For heavy games, it takes so much, like the way I tend to think about it is like every component so we always talk about barriers to play, and usually people mean like, you know, is this rule hard? Is the rule book long? Is the text small? Those are all barriers to play. But the biggest barrier to play is like number of components. So there's um, there are many games that I love that just have so many dang different like fiddly little tokens. I'm not going to call anybody out. But like I don't play those games because they take so long to set up and clean up. It's a bummer. And so I, I, I really try in my design practice to, like, fewest number of pieces. Like, I want to hand everybody a bag, I want to dump out a couple common bags, and then I want to go. 
Um, someone asks about the Bank of England. It's coming, baby. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's totally coming. Um, yeah. And I think also with that was that like um, working on like the, the more interactive uh, scenario and solo design. I think was like such still such a big core conceit of it. Because... Well, yeah. And I, uh, wait for solo design. Yeah. Yeah. For, for getting this second, uh, for a second printing together was to, to reintroduce some things that we felt like were left on the table. Oh, t- totally. Totally. And we, we, we can, we can really get in the solo in a sec too. Um, the other thing I'll say about set of time is like diplomacy. I can set up a game of diplomacy in like a minute and it's a seven hour game. Or five-hour game, really, if you're playing with people who are halfway competent. Uh, Dune is like the same thing. Like, Dune, great game, can be very long, sets up so fast, right? Give everybody their bag. Everybody puts stuff down. Okay, let's go. Right? I mean, like, it's just very, like, it's very simple. And I love I love a game with a fast setup. Um, okay, so, Drew, you want to talk about the, the, the conceit for the solo, or should we move to some other stuff? Um, I think talking a little bit about the solo is interesting. I th- um, so that first, uh, the first printing solo variant is um, is the militant, um, right? Essentially, like uh, conquer as much of India as fast as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, um, but that doesn't really get the full feel of what John Company is about um, in for the majority of the games. So. I think our biggest goal for de- um, for developing and working on a single player is getting something that's much more representative. I think Cole and I had talked about this um, about a um, like a young brash company uh, a family outside of the company that's trying to enter. Um, so um, uh, imagine a scenario where uh, a family doesn't hold any offices, and they are thus trying to take over as many offices and kind of uh, race to prestige um against other uh, uh bot players working out those the specific mechanisms um are, i think are going to take a little bit of time but more than anything to have a more thematic experience with um playing towards the prizes and playing towards uh like hustling between um uh favor favor cubes among bots mm-hmm. um the court of directors play um rather than playing a game that the solo mode is purely based on the uh the combat um and sailing mm-hmm. yeah until i give that feeling it's like uh, the, th- the the touchstone drew that we've had is in the back of our minds is like the english boarding school drama where you're like the new and strange kid and oh, absolutely the, the company is run by like old mean families and you got to find your way through it to capture some of that like adversarial you know factional nature of the game uh, we have a couple different ways we're doing it. Drew is kind of taking the lead on the solo development, but he's cooking up some good stuff. Um, so I'm kind of excited to get to it. Uh, I'll say, too, that like we did a bunch of John Company work, and then we've had it on hold while we take care of the Premier campaign. And then we'll get back to the John Company work, and as soon as it's ready to go, we're gonna, we will, uh, we'll, we'll give it to you guys. So we're not... We, we, um, you know, The fact that, we're, that Drew's able to do this full-time is incredible. Like it's already been a huge force multiplier and I think uh, it will be for this too. Uh, yeah. So couple, uh, can I talk about some other design stuff, Drew? Oh, sure, please. Uh, so just a couple little things. Um, we, you'll note that there are no shipyards, no, no little ship grid or any of that stuff. What we're probably going to do is have like actual shipyard cards that you put your family member on. And then, you know, you can put it here. And one of the nice things about this is like, now we can negotiate for the shipyard. It's like a, it's an object. So we might be expanding some of the negotiations around infrastructure. Um, originally, we had hoped on ma- like really uh, expanding the shipyard and factory game. Uh, I don't know if that's actually going to happen. It's proved very hard. Uh, we, we might make one complication that might be introduced is uh, is having people uh, choose if they want to make guns or goods with their factories. Uh, spending this money to produce, probably not a thing that is going to exist in this game. Sorry. Uh, we tried. And then, like, manners the same way. And, you know, this may sound dumb, but, like, when it comes to the immersion, like, I can have a different manner on every one of these dang manner cards. Whoa, sorry, TTS. Um, 
And so, like, we can do a lot more with, like, the art design of the game and just, like, how it looks. I mean, one of the things I really want is when people look at this game on the table. With John Company, people look at it and they're like, what is that game about? And you're like, ah, there's uh, some lot of tables and numbers. But it's like, what's this game about? This is a game about India. It's about the British merchant class. And it's kind of upset. It's really upsetting. But, like, it also, it, it wears its heart on its sleeve a little bit more. And so it's going to be a lot more arty. It's going to have a lot more just stuff around. Um, yeah. And I actually, you know, uh, we're going to look at some artists to do some of the board pieces. But honestly, the way this board looks may not be that far from where it ends up. Like, I kind of like this board. I think it's handsome. I think it needs some polish and maybe some better art pieces. But, like, I think it's pretty. Yeah. Um, and I think this is at the core of it a very like, well, why why does Whirly Gig uh, like exist and what it's was it what is its function? Well, it's to stay a size so that we don't have we're not imposing unrealistic time constraints for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we could say, well, a slowdown for John Company. This thing needs more time to uh, to breathe and honestly to develop so that we can do it right. I think having um, having our backers and you and I j really keep the design so close to us. Yeah. Um, it's like it's I a little selfish that. that we keep our team so small, but it allows us to work quickly, and that yeah. that matters for a lot. Um, so uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was about the scenarios. So I uh, I think this can fit in the box. I agree, Joe. Thank you. I hope so. Right? Oh, um, so the resin boats, like, the, I want them, they're going to have circles in them, so you can put your little cameo guys, like, right on top. You can fit them right in your boats. There's going to be um, a bunch of interesting, like, cool little production tricks in there. Uh, so something I'm really excited about is how we are revamping the scenarios. So what happened in the previous game, because there are all of these accessibility barriers, is that most people played a lot of the early company scenario, but they never they never just got beyond the early company scenario, which is a super bummer because all the other scenarios are way cooler. <laughs> the early company scenario is a training scenario. It's the same things with, with Republic of Rome. Like the early Republic scenario in Republic of Rome, cool it's fine it's a pretty good little co-op but man that mid republic and the late republic scenario chef's kiss those are the good ones those are the good <laughs> ones um so what we want to do here is kind of imagine the game as having three or four scenarios so scenario one early company scenario kind of works the same way scenario two is going to be the company without a monopoly and then scenario three is going to introduce a component to the political phase, which will allow players to vote to deregulate the company. Now, in the campaign game versus the uh, like, basically, there were three scenarios in the old game and like two or three different ways the company could deregulate. We're going to simplify all that nonsense. So basically, it's going to say, hey, here is the game without game with Monopoly game without Monopoly. And so it, between the first scenario and the second scenario, you're being introduced to essentially the second half of the game. And then in the third scenario, you're introduced to the trigger, which allows players to deregulate optionally. But that scenario is built to be a little shorter and tilted towards the trigger happening. And then yeah. in the final scenario, the trigger, like you just, the final scenario is just the early company scenario with the trigger in place. So that it can deregulate early, it can deregulate late, it doesn't have to deregulate at all. But it probably won't be a 10 turn scenario, it'll probably be like 8, or even like 7 or something like that. Um, because the 10, 10 turns is a long time in this game. Um, okay, so, 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 um, the deregulation game has a really exciting change that I am like super pumped for. And I think I can actually like explain it by using this mod, maybe? Okay, yeah, I'm going to try to do this. This is, you know, whatever. We're, we're just hanging out. We're celebrating the, a campaign that, like, yeah, flipping, not? like, blew past Drew and I's wildest expectations. I can't even imagine the fact that it's done so well. <laughs> um, I don't even, like, fully 
understand what it means that it's done so well. It like it's it's amazing. Y'all are incredible. Um. So okay. Here we go. Um. All right. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're, sh you're I'm um, showing you're them how the sh how the new share system works for private companies. Sure. So um. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take these shares over here. This is like really weird, but we're just going to do it. Yeah, what's going on? Oh, I don't even have the... Oh, my gosh. Okay, whatever. Excuse me. Um, okay, so I'm just going to explain how this works. I just I wanted a lighter background is what I wanted. Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, is this the right way to do it? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, cool. I'm just going to explain it. Um... So, Drew, your hand is very large. And very, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so, this, uh, imagine that, I'm going to explain how, so this next part is probably not going to make any sense unless you've played John Company. <laughs> so, in John Company, um, do I have one handy? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hunt for just a second. Because if I, if I have one handy, it's going to explain a lot. Uh, oh, one of the little, um, the little uh, private firms. Boop, yeah. Boop, boop, boop. All right, here we go. That's the board without background. Here we go. Uh, okay, so you'll see over here the Walsh and Co. Um, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get kind of fancy. We're gonna take a little snip. Okay, just so you can see. So um, every family has a has a uh, reverse side that has a uh, company side, so they can all turn into companies. So the whole thing about John Company, I guess I should. This is a general audience. I should explain how the how the game works. It, I think I still think it's kind of cute what it does. So if the, in the first scenario, you're all collectively controlling one company and you're fighting for control of this company, and in later scenarios, players gain the ability to start their own companies. So there is a central company, and it's very powerful, but it's also controlled by a lot of players. And in the second half of the game, you could have your own little company. And it has a lot, it's scary, it has a lot of liabilities, but it's it's all you, it's all yours, like a little game company. Um, and it's nice to have your own little game company. Uh, so uh, the way this works is, uh, this is from like an, a weird old um, kit, I think, but whatever. Uh, maybe I'm not maybe I'm not so sure about that. Okay, so like you have cubes, like the blue player might own 20% of your company, and to show that they own the 20% of your company, you uh, they have this like funny cube that, that that is sitting there, and later you might need to raise capital for something, and so they buy another 10% from you, and that they give the company the money, and then you you seed some of your uh, some of your control of the company. Um, this is a little funny and a little weird, uh, and it actually, uh, this like 10 share company system has a lot of, uh, strange problems and to fix those problems, I, um, I used this really insane rounding chart. Is this it? No. Yes, this is it. Okay. Uh... So there you ignore go. everything okay. else on this board. <laughs> well, here, I'll just zoom in. So, like, what this means is, like, if the dividend that the company is paying out is $9, you have to give the 20% shareholder 2 If the dividend is 14 between $14 and $19, or $18, you have to give them 3 I'm not going to try to explain this chart too badly. It's very weird. Basically, the way it works is instead of using any kind of normal rounding, I used a very <laughs> funny rounding that made it so it was possible for people who had, like, 10% of a company to make enough money that it was actually interesting. So this is a bad, this is bad design. Don't do this. Um, so here's how the new system works. When you form a company, you have a single share of that company, which is going to be a little, like, chipboard share piece. So here I am. I, this is my share of the Hastings company. I'm going to, I'm the Hastings family, and I own a share of the Hastings company. I'm, the, I'm the, the sole shareholder. I'm the owner of the company. Now, at any time I'd like, I can split this share as long 
as I have the okay, so uh, I can create more shares um, if I have uh, that. Let me rephrase this. If I have the permission of all shareholders, okay, so let me start over. I, I've never actually explained this to like a human being outside of Drew, so let me let me get back to it. So when I create my company, I'll have one share of the Hastings company, which is what this disk means. Now, I could split this if I wanted to. I could split it into two shares. I could split the two shares into four shares if I wanted to. Right? That's fine. Uh, but let's say Drew, who are you going to be, Drew? You're going to be the this family. Yeah. The Paxton family. Let's say Drew, I, I, I need to raise money for the company, and so I sell him one of my shares. Uh-oh. I've sold Drew one of my shares. This is always a problem. Now, at this point, when it comes to shares, I have the power to split. So, for instance, if I split my shares, I double everybody's shares. So, I would go from three to six. Drew would go from one to two. But let's say there's another family. And let's say my brother Blake is playing the, the Larkins family. And the Larkins family wants to buy a share. But I don't want to sell one of my shares, and Drew doesn't want to sell one of his shares. So the president of the company has the power to create a new share, as long as all shareholders agree. So uh, Drew agrees, I agree, and we create a new share for the Larkins family. And every company has up to 10 shares. Now, what the heck are these shares doing? Well, it's quite simple, really. Let me let me cut down on the number of shares, uh, just so we can. Let's say the situation looked like this: um, the Hastings family, whenever they pay out a dividend, needs to pay one dollar to every single share. And if they uh, and so uh, an important thing about running uh, private companies is you have to pay out money to meet public expectations. Let me see if I can find the public expectations chart. Here it is. Um, boy, that's a bad page to look at that chart. Let me see if I can find the better version of it. Ba, 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 ba. I don't even know if it's going to be in this version of the kit. This is an old, old John Company kit. I'm just hoping it has the right page. It doesn't. That's okay, though. Um, here's a hot trick. Uh, you'll notice that these cards are flipped upside down. It's because I can fold them and staple the tops to make double-sided right. cards. Um, okay, so let's go over here. So just look at this part. Actually, here, we'll make it super easy. Um, ooh, here we go. Uh, where did that go, that snip? Uh-oh, just straight disappeared on me. Whatever. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it right. I want This is important, so I'm going to do it right. Uh, this is a casual hang that we're just having. Oh, let's do a better one than that. That's bad. Okay. So, uh, there's this very important chart when you play, um, I was trying to use Alt-Tab to find it. You just couldn't see my, uh, my other screen. Um, so, uh, this, uh, this oh, uh, is the uh, public uh, expectations chart. So the way it works is if there are three regions open, then every private company in operation needs to pay at least $7 out. So let's say that's the case. So in this instance, I have four shares. Like the yellow company has four shares. So what this means is if I'm paying dividends, I pay one dividend out for four bucks, but the public isn't satisfied. So I've got to pay another dividend out for another $4. And now I've paid out eight, and the public is happy. And I could pay out more if I wanted to, but the public is satisfied at this point. Um, and so what, but the, uh, the player who's played the first version of John Company will note, this doesn't involve any goofy tables or any funny rounding. You can just do it. And then if you want to sell shares, I could sell this share to you. Or if I didn't want, if this was too much to sell to you and I was worried, I could first, as president of the company, split the shares out. So now everybody doubles their shares. And then I could sell you one half of what I wanted to sell you. Now, 
there are some funny things here, but uh, one thing to note about this is because I split the shares, one of the consequences is when I pay out, now eight is my minimum payout because there are eight shares in existence. Um, so these rules are a little 18xxy, and when I made John Company, I hadn't played 1817, and I hadn't played any of the 18xx games where oh, small companies 18... grow into big companies. That happened, like, right after I finished John Company. I'm pretty sure. Is that true? I think it might be, be true. I think I played it... I think you. I think we, we played 1817 for the first time after John Company. After John Company was done. And so, like, what's happening with this shareholding logic is that it's actually the same logic as the company's own shareholding. Uh, and so, this is, like, a very, like... Um, my design ethos post root of like use the systems that already exist in the game to do what the systems like what, what you want them to do don't invent a new system for every single like thing that you want to do or you'll get exhausted so uh in general these rules are probably going to be a little shorter but not that much shorter um the game will be a lot more approachable and it should play a little bit faster but not that like john company will remain a two to three hour economic and negotiation brawl. But I think it's going to like have a bit of a friendlier face. It's going to be a little more welcoming than it used to be. Um, and I'm super excited for it. Just looking at all this stuff makes me want to run a game with John Company right now. I know. I had um, to keep on telling Cole, like, no, we have to wait. We have to work on Premiere a bit more. And, and we're both just like chomping at the bit to... Uh, to yeah, to like just, to just get in there. Um, and one last thing I'll mention, too, is like, uh, don't read too much into this board, especially this part. I desperately wanted a system where the chairman would like introduce new shares into the game. And there was a funny auction for the shares. It doesn't work. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Um, how would you measure it, measure it in rate uh, in in a weight of root factions? Um, I love that measuring stick. <laughs> it's that's a great question. I... Like okay, is Drew? You've played both Oath and John Company. Which one is heavier? I uh, John Company is such a peculiar beast, um, and that's not. That's not changing. I mean, um, yeah. So like, like John Company is two. It's two root factions fully. No, that's not true. It's three. It's like three. If you, it depends on how deep you want to go. But like, it's it's a big boy. It's a big yeah. boy. Um, Oath is harder to know what to do. So like in John Company, you learn the game and you're like, okay, I need cash and I need leverage and I'm gonna go find those things in oath you don't know what you need and so the beginning of oath is like I'm just exploring I'm not really like I don't even know what the like what the final contest of oath is gonna look like you're not even really sure it it, it kind of slowly unveils whereas John company is more like, who do I have leverage over and how can I push that leverage to the hardest place? So it does a funny thing where like, if I like, you know, the John company teach is going to be about as long as the oath teach John company will be a little bit more bewildering because there's just more strangeness to it. But once you get into it, I think it's easier to swim through. Whereas oath, like, I don't know if anybody watched our live stream today. I've been a lot of live streaming lately. Um, it like it is um in oath like the end game of our oath game was so madcap and wild you couldn't have prepared for it john company you know how it's going to end or there's like two different yeah. endings i mean one way to measure this is like oath has like six different in game victory conditions john company has like two or three depending on how the company falls apart. Because the company can't, sometimes it just crashes and burns. Um, yeah, and it's like, the, the the actual individual rules in the game are not that scary. Like, most of the rules are pretty bite-sized and small. But I think um, one thing I, about my design practice that hopefully uh, most of y'all know is I, uh, I build most mechanisms from first principles rather than working in genre. So, I, like, I have never been like, I am going to make a worker placement game. 
that's not a thing I've said. Or like, this is my auction game. Mm. Instead, it's like, okay, in order to produce this tension, this game needs an auction. And right. so because of that, I think what happens is like, John Company isn't really like any game you've played. And for that reason, it's a little obtuse. It's, uh, it's, it's heavier than Elf. It's, Drew's right, it's three root factions. It's a <laughs> solid, John Company is a solid half an hour teach. Oath, I can teach in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't see that going away with a... With a no, it, it is not, it's not going to go away. I think it is going to be more inviting. It's going to be easier for you. I'm going to help mm-hmm. you teach your friends how to play this dang game. Yeah. Uh, and also, we'll probably have a dope TTS mod too, because yeah, no, no, no because kidding. I am I am a I am a converted boy. Uh, it's so much fun to to play the yeah. moon physics of yeah. the moon physics of TTS. I think I have my my actual physics are on low right nice. now, which is why everything is snapping. Um, well, Cole, how about we um how about we wrap we uh we wrap it up and close up shop here? I think we should do that. That's you know uh, good. I, well, I think more than anything, this this leaves it at a door to say, this is where we're going to be spending our time between uh, between getting Premiere ready, and this is where our development time is. And mm-hmm. honestly, that's that's what a lot of the the this success for this campaign means. Hey, this uh, uh, we can have the time to explore projects like this. Yeah, so what what Drew and I are doing is the next month is going to be finishing up Premiere, getting all the files to the factory and through pre-press. We're not anticipating any problems with that. It'll be, you know, we really hope to have these games to the fall, uh, to you guys by uh, you know, early fall. Um, and then as soon as that's done, which could be as soon as like a couple weeks, uh, we're we're in John Company land and there's a world where we are showing you guys a lot more of this game in just a few months, or it takes longer. We're not really sure, but this is like where we're going to be spending our energies, and the speed at which we feel like we can do this game right is going to determine uh, when we do traffic and when we uh, get the reconstruction game going. So we just wanted, I wanted today, I mean, I think both Drew and I wanted to take a little time to uh, look at the weird journey that Pamir went on to where it is now and to kind of show you guys some of the back end stuff. And then we also wanted to show you what we've been tinkering with so that you can see that there's some exciting stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, okay. I'm going to wait a second and see if there are any final questions in the chat. I'm happy to take them. And then uh, I'm going to try to coax my brother into playing a, t- a turbo in Dota. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, which we will not be streaming. I'll let you go to sleep, Drew. That's fine. Um. Uh, nice. Yeah, I'm so glad that uh, y'all came out and uh, watched the stream with us because it was um, uh, more than anything, it was so nice for Cole. It was so nice to look at those old pictures of, of pre-first uh, printing um, Premiere. That was a trip. I haven't I haven't looked at that uh, those original files in forever. Yeah, it, it's crazy. <laughs> Seems come a, come a while. Yeah, I am excited. Thanks, Travis. Travis has been been around for for most of the trip. He had it helped me edit the very first version of the Premiere rules. Maybe I think so. I'm not sure. We had a we had an editor in the Premiere rules who like was just not into the game, and then he did not survive the project very long. I think Travis came in after that. I can't remember. Um, yeah, and I like a lot of the a lot of the people that I met in board gaming. I met through Premiere, uh, including folks who are still testers and friends. So it's it's been a kind of important project for me. All right, I'm gonna get teary if I keep prattling. Y'all have a wonderful evening. This was so much fun. We should do this. I want to do this with John Company because John Company has some yeah, weird. Maybe this could even be a th- like a more uh, a more regular thing that we can do across the um, across the spring because it is fun and TT uh, our dope TTS mod is yeah. is an incredible like it's such a cool tool and I think we were both surprised by how how valuable we have actually found it. Yeah, we uh, and, and working we... remote. Oh, totally. And I like uh, later on, we will do like a little John company update and you can see how much it changed and all that kind of stuff. I love, I love process video. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's right. Travis, you're right. right. I brought Joko was the thing that you came on for, uh, or, or maybe infamous traffic in a little way. I can't remember. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait to be playing more of this game.
Uh, so that's it, though. We're going to call it a night. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Thank you so much for supporting us. It's crazy. I'm just overwhelmed still, and I'm just going to keep saying that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's it's not going to make it any less true. All right. Yep. Well, everybody have a wonderful <laughs> evening, and take care. And I'm going to find out, figure out how to turn off the stream. But not before <laughs> I show you a window into Streamland. Uh-oh, take them to the Streamland. <laughs>